Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Oscilloscopes XY Mode. In this presentation, we'll explain the fundamentals of XY Mode on oscilloscopes and the four most important applications of XY Mode. In normal operation, an oscilloscope is most often used to plot voltage as a function of time. The voltage values are obtained via the scope's inputs or channels, often using a probe, and the time values are obtained from the scope's internal time base. This is controlled by the time per division or horizontal setting. Most scopes have multiple channels or inputs that can be acquired and plotted simultaneously, but in normal operation, these channels are all plotted individually against the same time base. That is, each channel is plotted as a function of time. XY mode involves two channels, but in this case, one channel is being plotted against or as a function of another channel, instead of being plotted as a function of time. As we'll discuss in a few moments, this can be very useful in many different applications. XY mode is usually entered using either a special button or application, and the user typically can also select which channel will be X and which channel will be Y. The plot of X versus Y is then displayed on the oscilloscope screen. Note that many modern oscilloscopes, as shown here, can display the individual X and Y channels together with the XY plot. This can be very helpful in both configuring and in troubleshooting XY mode operation. The four main applications of XY mode are Lissajou patterns, IV or current versus voltage curves, constellation diagrams, and AM modulation depth measurements. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll provide a brief technical explanation of each of these applications as well as show how they're configured and used. We'll start with Lissajou patterns or curves, which are named after the 19th century French physicist Jules Antoine Lissajou. Lissajou patterns are the most widely known application of XY mode, and these patterns are sometimes even used as logos or in popular art. Lissajou patterns are created by plotting the two input channel voltages against each other, and the frequency or phase relationship between these two signals can then be visualized from the resulting patterns. We'll take a brief look at some examples in just a few moments, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding Oscilloscopes, Lissajou Patterns, for more detailed explanations and examples. Part of the reason why Lissajou Patterns are a popular XY mode application is that it's very easy to configure them. The X signal is connected to one channel, and the Y signal is connected to another channel. These are often channel 1 and channel 2, but this is configurable on some oscilloscopes. The result will be a plot of X versus Y. Note that like all other scope measurements, the horizontal and vertical settings should be configured appropriately, and a suitable trigger type and trigger parameters should also be set. Let's look at some examples of Lissajou patterns. If both signals have the same frequency and phase, this will appear as a straight line on the XY display. A phase difference, or shift between the two signals, leads to an oval or a circular trace. And if the signals have different frequencies, this typically creates a pattern with multiple crossings or lobes. Again, please see the separate presentation, Understanding Lissajou Patterns, for a much more detailed discussion on using and interpreting different types of Lissajou patterns. The next application of XY mode is creating IV curves. As the name implies, IV curves are plot of current, I, as a function of voltage, V. These curves are used, for example, to characterize diodes, since important values such as the forward or turn-on voltage, reverse leakage current, and reverse breakdown voltage can easily be read off this type of curve. The first requirement in creating an IV curve is a stimulus voltage. This can be provided by a function generator sweeping the voltage from negative to positive. The second requirement is simultaneous measurement of the voltage across and the current through the component under test. These values are then plotted in XY mode to produce the IV curve. Let's walk through this step by step. We'll use a Zener diode in this example. The first step is to connect the diode to a function generator. Note that many modern scopes have an internal function generator that can be used for this purpose. An appropriate stimulus signal, 
usually a sine or triangular waveform, is generated such that the voltage sweeps the range of interest. For a Zener diode, we would want the voltage to start below the reverse breakdown voltage and end somewhere above the forward or turn on voltage. We then configure the X channel to measure the voltage across the diode and the Y channel to measure current through the diode. The best way to do this is to use a special current probe that clamps around the conductor, but other methods can be used to measure the current. For example, we could calculate current by using a differential voltage probe to measure the voltage drop across a known resistor in series with the diode. Once the two channels have been configured, enabling XY mode will cause the IV curve to be plotted on the oscilloscope display. Let's look at a couple of examples of IV curves created in XY mode. A standard LED or light emitting diode will usually have this type of trace, with the turn on voltage being partly a function of the color of the LED. And as we've looked at already, a Zener diode will have both a forward turn on voltage and a reverse breakdown voltage. Note that in these examples, the length of the trace depends on the voltage range the function generator sweeps across. The next application of XY mode is creating constellation diagrams. Most modern digital modulation uses vector signals, that is the phase of the signal is used to convey information. Vector signals are often illustrated in the form of a constellation diagram, where the points represent the endpoints of vectors with a given magnitude and phase. Vector signals are normally created using something called an IQ modulator, which combines two channels, in in-phase or I-channel, and a quadrature or Q-channel. The magnitude of these two channels correspond to the X and Y coordinates of the endpoints in a constellation diagram. Therefore, one way of creating a constellation diagram is plotting the I and Q channel voltages in XY mode on an oscilloscope. Let's look at how this is done. The I and Q channels are connected to two channels of the oscilloscope, with the X channel being I and the Y channel being Q. It's also necessary to connect the symbol clock to the scope's trigger in input. The symbol clock outputs a pulse or trigger signal that the scope uses to sample both the I and Q channels at the appropriate time, and thus create a constellation diagram consisting of the values seen at each symbol time. Note that a fast time base that is a small time per division setting, is needed so that the scope only acquires at the symbol points and not along the trajectory of the signal as it moves between the symbol points. We'll take a look at this in more detail in a few moments. Here are two examples of how a constellation diagram appears when plotting the I and Q channels in XY mode. In this example, we see the 16 symbols of a 16 qualm modulated signal appearing in the square shape common to qualm modulation schemes. This example also contains 16 symbols or constellation endpoints, this time arranged in the concentric circles created by 16 APSK modulation. Let's come back to the time base configuration we referred to earlier. Recall that a small time base or seconds per division setting is needed so that the scope is only plotting I and Q at each symbol time. In this case, the constellation will appear as a set of points. If a longer or slower time base were used, then the scope would also be plotting I and Q values as the signal moves between the endpoints, that is, between symbol times. So the constellation diagram will also show the lines or paths that the signal took in moving between the endpoints. The last application of XY mode we'll look at is AM modulation depth measurements. Recall that amplitude modulation changes the amplitude of a high-frequency carrier based on the amplitude of a lower-frequency signal. Here, the red line shows the low-frequency modulating signal, and the blue line shows the high-frequency modulated signal. Modulation depth is a measure of how much the amplitude of the carrier changes. A higher modulation depth means a greater difference between the maximum and minimum amplitude of the modulated signal. For example, this signal has a much greater modulation depth than the one above it.
This difference in relative amplitudes can be expressed in two different ways, the modulation index, m, and the modulation depth, which is the same value but given as a percentage. The top example has a modulation index of 0.3 and a modulation depth of 30%, while the bottom example has a modulation index of 0.9 or a modulation depth of 90%. AM modulation index or depth can be calculated using XY mode and the trapezoid method. We configure the two oscilloscope channels as follows. The X channel is connected to the modulating signal, and the Y channel is connected to the modulated signal. This will create a trapezoid shape on the XY display. Modulation index can then be calculated by finding the length of the two vertical edges of the trapezoid, A and B, and by using a very simple equation. To convert modulation index to modulation depth in percent, simply multiply by 100. Here is a setup for measuring AM modulation depth. The low frequency modulating signal is connected to the X channel input, and the higher or RF frequency modulated signal is connected to the Y channel input. If this is configured properly, a trapezoid should appear on the XY display. Markers or cursors can then be used to measure the two vertical edges of the trapezoid, and the values are used to calculate modulation index or depth. Let's look at some examples. In this example, we measure the vertical edges of the trapezoid, and using our equation, we get a modulation index of 0.3, or a modulation depth of 30%. In our second example, we have the same length for A, but a much shorter length for B, and plugging into our equation, we come up with a modulation index of 0.7, which corresponds to a modulation depth of 70%. Time for a brief summary. XY mode on an oscilloscope is used to plot two channels against each other, rather than plotting them against an internal time base, that is, individually as a function of time. There are four main applications of XY mode, Lissajou patterns, IV curves, constellation diagrams, and AM modulation depth measurements. In this presentation, we only had time for a short introduction to Lissajou patterns, so please see the separate presentation on how to interpret and use Lissajou patterns. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Oscilloscopes XY mode. If you're interested in learning more about oscilloscopes, or oscilloscope-related measurements and applications, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.